Alrighty, here we are. Race eight, night nine of 10 for PA Speed Week. We were at Port Royal, my first time here this week, um, second race here this week, and it was just as exciting as uh, ever. I think Port Royal is one of probably the best race tracks. I've said this a lot of times. So um, obviously it was nice, but it actually took a while to work in tonight, but we'll get into that. Hot laps, Rico Abreu was fastest. Going to time trials, they did two cars on the track, two laps each at a time. Top three were Mike Wagner, Brent Marks, and Justin Peck. Now we'll go through the heat races and I will just forewarn that basically, I mean, so they all went flag to flag. Nothing necessarily super exciting happened in any of them really because the track stayed young. Um, so it stayed tacky and it was pretty much a one line racetrack the majority of the time through the heat races. Heat race number one, Justin Whittle and Logan Wagner were on the front row, and by the end of it, they kind of, you know, they had a race into turn one, but then it went single file from there. Logan Wagner first, Danny Dietrich second, Justin Whittle third, Mike Wagner fourth, and Freddie Raymer the final transfer. Heat race number two started with Rico Abreu and Blaine Heimbach on the front row, and more of the same, just kind of single file. There was a horrible buildup of a, a sort of like a rut and a berm on the inside of turns one and two, which are over there out of focus but over there and the end of heat number two was Rico Abreu winning over Blaine Heimbach then Brent Marks Austin Bishop and Michael Walter heat race number three saw Ryan Smith and Lucas Wolf on the front row and at the end of it Ryan Smith won Justin Peck was second Lucas Wolf third Jeff Halligan fourth and Dylan Norris rounded out the top five and transfers Heat number four, hometown kid Dylan Sisney alongside Ryan Timms on the front row. And to the end of that one, there was a nice little race going on um, until Ryan pulled away from Sisney. Anthony Macri got on really strong at the end, but Ryan Timms won over Anthony Macri, Dylan Sisney, Gerard McIntyre, and Devin Borden. In the B main, the front row was Steve Bulkwalter and TJ Stutz, and they were very far off in a way on their own from the start of that one. There was a nice race between Tyler Reeser and Kyle Moody, but that was for um, either fifth or sixth on the track. So that was outside of the transfer positions as only the top four go. There was a lap, last lap pass for the win of the B main, which gets you one singular starting position better for the feature. But it went to Steve Buckwalter over TJ Stutz, Ryan Taylor, and AJ Flick was the final transfer. So you go to the A main, Mike Wagner and Ryan Timms drew for the front row of that one. On lap one, Justin Whittle spun out of turn number two. So they did a restart again. And the second attempt, well, it was they got a one lap down, but they didn't get another lap in before Justin Whittle spun again, or stopped rather. He had front, uh, front right damage to the car. So he stopped on the front straightaway, just down in there. Off the restart of that one, Brent Marks, who was showing he was very fast, just took off from the lead, um, at which he had assumed to that point. Logan Wagner was also very fast in moving up through the field until with 23 to go, there was a big crash on the exit of turn two, including Justin Whittle, Michael Walter, Dylan Norris, and that was it. With 14 laps to go, Anthony Macri hit this rut that was down here in one and two and it blew out his right rear tire. He went to the work area and they found that they had a fuel leak. So he was done for the evening. With five laps to go, Devin Borden stopped on the back straightaway on the entrance to turn three. And that was really interesting because Brent Marks was pretty much gone from the front of the field and the Wagners were fighting each other for position at that point in time. So it all brought, got brought back together. And with four laps of racing before the next yellow, there was a one to go yellow that brought Marks back into contention with the Wagners. Logan had gotten around Mike by this point, but there was a white flag about to go out and then Ryan Taylor stopped on the entrance to turn number three. The one lap shootout was uh, fairly eventful. So Brent Marks took the lead coming through turn four. He, he was the leader. He had a big jump on Logan, who was in second. They came down the front straightaway. They got down here. Brent didn't quite hit this corner right. He went down to the bottom side and hit the berm. So Logan rode the top. He got the momentum down the back straight away. They went down into turn number three. Marks drove a kind of middle defensive line. Wagner tried to bring some momentum into the corner, went a little lower into the corner than Marks. He couldn't quite hold it and Marks was able to hold the defensive line and Brent Marks won the race. So making four in a row here at night number nine. 
He beat Logan and Mike Wagner to the line in the top three, and Rico Abreu had a solid fourth place finish as well. So here is the top 10 rundown on your screen now that you can see how the uh, top 10 finishers went for tonight. And now, now I'm here, so I'm not going to talk about this because I don't know what's going to happen with the power rankings, but they're on your screen right now. You can look at them and see where we're at with one night left. Why didn't they run down there? Because they're late models. This is Nate. Hi. Nate, what's your rundown on the feature tonight? Uh, for what? The sprint cars? Yeah. You know we're doing speed week stuff. We gotta do this. Yeah, I mean, every time you really have marks in the field, there's no question he's gonna be a factor. Um, I was more surprised with how caution field it was. Yeah. And, you know, see, I don't know if this was an issue with the Hoosier tire on the right rear of Anthony Macri's car, but, hmm. um, well, that's definitely not supposed to happen. No, it's not. He was banging the boards though, and that's one good thing about this place is down three and four, straight to the wall all the time, running wide open on the wall. You can't be the best action in the country, I'd say. Yes, by sir. By far. Feature was all right. I mean, battle for lead wasn't really that interesting. No. Battle for second was probably the most interesting thing on the track between the relatives, the father and the son. But what was your take, Joe? Well, um. I thought it was. I thought the cautions were all right. I didn't think it was too bad. Um, I expected Anthony to have a little more. I know that he he hit that rut in one and two, and it kind of screwed him up a little bit. Yeah. But um, my uh, <coughs> um, Logan couldn't pass Mike, so that's the end. I'm gonna try to figure out how to get out of here because I. Oh, look at this! A nice little gap. Oh, never mind. I can't get out of here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that I was actually back at the racetrack. Tomorrow, Seal and Grove, as long as nothing, no sorts of emergencies or anything happen, I will be happy to present you with the finale of 2022 PA Speed Week. So thank you for watching. Be safe, and we will see you for the next one. Can we redo that? <laughs>